So, so you all come from different backgrounds, and although you've all been musicians for a long time, you've all studied or done other things at the same time. How much do you feel that's kept you sane when you've been together, and how much do you feel that helps you to treat music like a passion as well as being a profession? Uh, I'm really grateful for the experience that I started out as a punk rock drummer. You know, I'm kind of self-taught. Um, I was, I mean, I was a punk rock kid. It was weird because I was a punk rock kid, but at the same time went to like this elite school. So it was in school I had to be controversial. Controversial in, in, in school I had to be like very tidy, and then after school it was like boots and six like pistols nails. badge and yeah so on. But that made me like I always have like been in bands. I made my own music, and then that was like since I was twelve, you know, when I was in bands, and halfway that when I was like twenty three, that was like when my real professional career started. So. For the past like seven years, I played with a lot of pop stars, you know, recorded, like worked for other people like in the industry. Um, so like I have seen both sides of the of the of kind of the coin, you know. So yeah. and it really helps because you have that DIY make it and really angry side, uh, like which is really against the establishment and the music business, and then you have this really kind of be beautiful, be presentable, like do that and they will like you, you know, stuff. So I think that that combination is really good. I'm really thankful for those experiences. And and uh, yeah, I, I think it, I have had the best of the both worlds. Now, now at least I know, like, I think I know like what to do or not to do or, or where I want to go at least or who I want to be. And, and that's, uh, I think that's the hardest question sometimes. Like, what is your goal or what, what is your, where are you going? you know, where, where is this band going or stuff. So, um, yeah, that has helped a lot. Do you think it would feel different if you'd come into this business when you were, like, 17 or 18? You mean in the mainstream uh, business? Yeah, if, you, if you'd come in and been making pop music or, you know, electronic music when you were that age, do you think it would have felt different in that case? Um, I, I think I would be very glad to have had the experience earlier because uh, that gives you a lot of experience. You work with a lot of different people... Do a lot of different stuff. Uh, even like yesterday, I had to write a, what like a personal uh, life description, which is really hard, which seems really narcissistic, right? But it's like it had to be done. So, and when like putting all those names who I worked with, and then you start to remember, oh, I did that, and I did that show, and oh, it was there. It's like it's like oh, I have like done some stuff. It was like oh, I have like because you don't think about it every day. It's like oh, you might play a stadium with a big pop star. I was 10,000 people, but it's just like, at some point you don't think about it. Just like, okay, I'm going to bash the hell out of the drums and do my thing, and then I'm going to go home and feed my cat. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, yeah, okay, that was that. But, because, but, but that happens with time, you know, that happens with experience, and I'm really glad about the experience. So I think the earlier you, you get that kind of experience in your career and know how to deal with it, meaning that you don't puff up and be like, I'm I'm so important or I'm so fancy, you know, if you can, okay, this is cool, you know, let's see if we can make it cooler, let's let's see where it takes you, then it makes you stronger. But I guess if it happens too early, like when you're maybe 15, 16, it can really kind of be have a ruining effect at the mm. same time. And uh, you, Johanna, you've almost got the most different background of any of the group in terms of you studied, if I'm right, uh, fashion styling at um, at the Estonian Academy of Arts. Yeah. yeah? So um, how how has that um, experience of that part of life influenced the band, do you think, if at all? Well, music comes first. And uh, I have always been singing. And the fashion studies came four years ago to me. Mm. So it's it's a work, and uh, but I'm but I'm really happy that I'm that lucky to do everything I want and I love. So I don't I don't get bored mm. with 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 what I do. So was singing always the thing that you really wanted to do, even when you were doing other things? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good answer. Yes. Like a stone Finally. just like fell. I got, I got my one answer, one word answer. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, but um, um, it, so, w when did you decide, Hando, that uh, you you weren't just going to listen to music and you weren't just going to fiddle about? You were going to be part of a band and do it seriously. I think the first light bulb moment was when uh, uh, I attended uh, Guano Apes concert. I remember that was like the 
in somewhat like a very special concert for me because I was there alone and it was like my first like really like a rock concert. And then I when I saw Stefan Hura, who is the the bass player, like going insane on stage and and the and it sounded so well and and it was like everything was so so great. Then I thought like oh, I want to be a bass player. So actually, I'm gonna intersect here. It was a cool thing because we were at the same concert. I didn't know each other at all, and yeah. when we have reminiscent where we stood at the concert, we were probably a few people apart, yeah. like literally, but we didn't have any uh, knowledge uh, of each other. Yeah. So, and uh, it was an awesome concert. Yeah, it was awesome, and 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 my family has uh, has like a music background also. Like my father was actually tra- like a professional uh, trombone player, and also my grandfather, and uh, but but. I haven't had so much like uh, like official education, but my father has always been very strict with me, like playing the piano, and I've been like rehearsed uh, hours, and he has always told me like how wrong I play. <laughs> <laughs> so at at one point, I like I when I was quite uh, quite young, I like I quit all the music stuff because it was like too difficult, and I had to like uh, rehearse so much, and and then I started playing like basketball and doing whatever like all the boys do. And and then um, at one point it's just like I couldn't be without it. It's like weird to say, but it, that that was the truth. And then uh, after that Guano Apes concert, I I, I I took it like really seriously, and and I I bought I bought my first bass guitar. Uh, it costed like four hundred crones, which is like uh, I don't know, like a super like a little amount of like thirty euros or whatever, something like that. And I remember, like, I was driving home in a bus, and like the bass guitar, which was like old, uh, like a Czech-made uh, Yolana bass, uh, I had it like in a plastic bag, and I was like sitting, uh, like in the in the bus, and we were being like super excited, and then there was like a like a some one guy like uh, sitting across uh, across from the hallway, just li- just like you right now, and the guy was asking like, what do you think how much this bass guitar like uh, costs, <laughs> and I was like. If that guy is trying to like steal that from me, like, what am I going to do? Like, I will go. I, I was making like a plan how to like run off from the bus and just like jump the fences and so on and so on. But anyway, uh, then and then it all started because and and then I had some of my classmates uh, with whom I started doing some band stuff together and and uh, and then it like d- developed and developed and developed and and that and now we're here. There was also like a the, like a time in between everything when like for two years or something like that I I I didn't do anything and any like any songs or so, or I didn't play the instrument and and I I really felt that there was something like like really missing and I was like there was like a, some like weird stress inside of me all the time and when and when I found out what what was the reason then it was like so clear to me because that, that's and then yeah. It's a long, long answer. I like long answers. Um, they, they give me time to think about the next question. <laughs> but um, so, uh, I, I, actually, it's been it's one of those things, isn't it? When when you have like family pushing you to make music, and when when you have uh, you know the, um, those other distractions, sometimes you don't really understand why it's important to keep practicing until you're older, do you? Really, I mean, yeah. yeah. Actually, like my parents were not really pushing me doing like music at all because my father knew how difficult and uh, it it is, you know, to like make it. And uh, but they were they have been always like super supportive. Like all the weird stuff I want to do, they're always like usually like, okay. We me it was like the opposite. It was like don't do music, like, don't play the drums. You know, like in in school, my parents like they didn't mean harm, but it was like yeah, it's like. That's like drumming. That's nothing. So I always envy, like not envy, but I give a lot of uh, respect to Johanna's parents because uh, they have come and see almost every show, and there hasn't been like a few anymore. There has <laughs> been like a, quite a lot. So yeah. they're always there. Like even it's like it's night time, some very late, or at festivals uh, you know, like in Latvia or Lithuania. Sometimes they like travel there to see the show and really support him and. You know, it's kind of like yeah, they're here. I'm like, oh my god, like they are in Lithuania in, at this weird With festival where e- everybody's are under drugs, <laughs> probably. <laughs> and then you have these really nice people from 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 Tallinn. Um, but um, yeah, it, uh, 
I, I guess that makes you feel really good, doesn't it, to have the support from your parents? Yeah, but it's it's always I have been like this because when I acted uh, for eight years from the first grade, then uh, I think all my family and uh, <laughs> uncles and grandmothers and everybody came. So I think it's really natural for me that they are there. It's like a family tradition. Yeah, but it's yeah. so great, it's so great. It's yeah. I'm on the stage, so they come yeah. to watch. And is is acting something you would consider going back to? No, or, never. No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that was the best one. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, I was asked that uh, same question today, actually. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, I don't like to speak on the stage. <laughs> right, right. Because uh, th there are there are a lot of people who um, who um, obviously take music as their first job and then also do a bit of acting. But would would you say for all three of you, it's important now to focus on this one piece of work and not get distracted by other things? Yeah. yeah no. Because <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Explain. Yeah. Well, as I as I take photographs and and do my styling work and my fashion editing, I think it's fun. It's yeah. just uh, I'm lucky to, that I have all those things and I can do all those things. So, do you think you would get bored if you only had one thing? I don't think so, but it, uh, but I'm sure it's much more fun. fun. Yeah, <laughs> hmm. for me it's like right now it's like everything is so insane and there is like always so much to do that that um like like sometimes I'm waking up and just like dreaming of of that moment where I could just like uh, like have my breakfast. Go in the studio and, and nobody will like disturb me or call me and I can just like sit there the whole day and and that and that I would be very happy to do that because I I've, I've noticed that I don't even have time to really think about like every anything because it's, it's always like you have to do this and that but you don't have the time to just like sit back and think you know he just he's like yeah he's lazy and. <laughs> And do you think maybe to an extent the fact that we don't have time to sit back and think is maybe robbing people of that album experience and robbing people of the chance to listen to the whole story of an album these days? I'm afraid so, yeah. Yeah, people are they're getting distracted and they, they're, there's no focus, I guess. I hope they will take the time. Uh, but I guess it's also the matter of, of whether it makes an impact on you. I mean, even... Um, I'm still answering the question, yes. I remember just like the moments in time, I guess, that everybody has when you have listened to a song or a band, discovered a band or a song and been like, holy moly, like, what is this? Uh, the last thing I remember was Florence and the Machine was already famous and we were part of Iris's band and and I was, I had never been into it. I haven't, I, I, I like knew what was the first single, which is the cover of the... No, it doesn't matter. Florence, uh, you've got the love. Yeah, you got the love. Yeah. You know, I didn't remember. I was like, yeah, I was like, I guess that's my least favorite Florence and the Machine song ever. Mm. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. That's like something. And and at some point, I was on YouTube or something, and I stumbled upon a live concert. And I was like, that feeling I got. I remember when I heard Nirvana's Nevermind for the first time, or when I heard Porridge's Poison. That touched me. It really touched me. And I remember Hando came by. I was like, now we're going to sit here. I'm going to show you this live performance. And Hando was like, yeah, like, I guess like familiar with the band, but wasn't really yeah. into it. And then we just had like a YouTube party and we watched the first of the machine live. And then it was just like Florence and the machine for the next three months. It was just like, yeah. what is this? And, and, and that was a magical moment. And I, and I didn't get just into a song, but I got into the album. I got into the artist. I was, I wanted to see where they come from. Like what's her background? Who are the band members? Where are they playing? What their live show looks like? How does the live show change? You know, which used to be all about music when you read Q magazine or watched MTV. Like, oh, what gear is he using? Like, where are they playing it? It was part of the experience. Uh, with a lot of other good songs, it's like, oh, this is a really good song, but it doesn't touch me, and I really don't give a crap about the artist. I don't want to wiki them, or I don't. I don't want to. I just don't care. That doesn't mean they're bad, but just you understand what I'm saying. It's just mm. like that uh, kind of discovery moment, and I understand it might happen very rarely. Uh, I hope somebody finds that discovery in our album uh, if people still take the time to listen to an album or a song, like really listen, not like, oh yeah, they're cool right now, like let's just listen to them because they're cool. I don't want to be cool. I, I want to be kind of, 
you know, we have put a lot of effort into what we do. We really appreciate if, if somebody would be touched by it and take the time to go into it and listen to that eight songs on the, on, on the Patience LP. Well, one of my favourite bands is Echo and the Bunny Men. I don't know if you've heard of yeah. them, but uh, um, and every one of their albums has about three or four tracks that are decidedly iffy. And <laughs> you know that they're a great singles band, but you still have to listen to the whole album to get the story of the album. Yeah. Um, otherwise, what's the point? But um, all three of your EPs, the Cricket's Empire EPs, um, is I mean, did you name them Volume One, Two, and Three for a reason? Do they follow a sequence or a story that you can tell me about? So yeah, it was. It, it wasn't intended actually. It was intended to be uh, actually instead of a trilogy. It was uh, supposed to be a foursome <laughs> or a Tetris. But uh, uh, I guess we just wanted to make three EPs in a short period of time. Plan four. But after the third one, we're like, okay, we're going to go for an album. It just kind of makes sense. And uh, it just kind of turned out out that way. So I guess it was like a per period for us, the Cricket Empire period, which is pretty fancy to say right now. <laughs> so, but, but, and I think it was a big learning experience and finding our own voice, finding, I wouldn't say our sound. I hope we never find our sound. I, I hope we found find really lots of different cool sounds. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, it just kind of played out that way. Um, yeah. Like it was, the, it was the beginning. So it was yeah, like the introduction to our experiment, and then came the pause, uh, and then we 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 made patience the album, and I want to like state out that we don't we are not the ones to say that the songs are like super good because like um, the person or the people who who listen uh, they will have their own opinions, but like production wise and songwriting wise and and the way and and how we and what we learn to while creating the first three EPs like it like manifests the, all the skills and knowledge manifests in in the patients LP so it was like the the uh, the the cricket empire thing was just like a like a demo version of like a <laughs> let's see how that yeah. stuff works. I really I set goals for for each other. It was kind of like okay, we're gonna do drums at this expensive studio and and like it was also like you like you have to like I have to deliver. I have to like make the next level for myself. Mm. And it was actually even before going to that, it was like I I don't know if I can do it. You know, it was like it wasn't pressure, but it was kind of like a thought: Can we do better? Can we like up the level with vocals? Can we up level with synth sounds, with drums, with with mixes, with masters, with like everything, and like pushing the envelope? So always asking ourselves, what can we do more? Like what what, um, how can we get better? And 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 critic and actually that comes from criticizing. That comes from a producer, Martin Gut, and was constantly like uh, finding cracks in the foundation, saying like this doesn't work. This has to be better. And it really helps a lot. So I wish I wish that kind of producer to any band who's who's thinking of getting a producer or working with a producer, they have to push you. You have, but of course you have to push yourself as well. But I think um, being able to uh, healthily accept criticism is the key to getting better, really, and not thinking like, uh, yeah, I would end it there. So, um, thinking again about uh, about the names, so Cricket Empire, but also Eyewear Experiment, wh where do they come from and uh, wh what do they mean? I want to start with the Cricket Empire, if you don't mind. You can start with Eyewear Experiment, I can start <laughs> with Cricket Empire. The Cricket Empire means uh, something so small, uh, but also something so powerful. So, as uh, you know, crickets, like those small creatures... Uh, they are quite lovely when they're alone, but uh, <laughs> but they bite really hard. Yeah, but you know, but whereas like uh, when there's the whole like army of crickets, then it's deadly and super like powerful, and and that is something we we wanted to to make something which is tiny and sweet, but also like like a little bit uh, scary and powerful. You know, they started out with a synth sound. <laughs> the crickets, but, but but yeah, yeah, yeah. Be because that last track on the first EP is crickets, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, mm. actually, the first song we ever did together. Yeah, co-wrote with Hando. It was just like yeah. doo, 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 very creative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but 
uh, I were experiment. Ah, uh, hardest question of them all. You can say it's just a name, uh, but I guess in in this interview already it comes out with the with the album as the different tracks on the patient's LP. Is the experiment doesn't come from meaning that we are an experimental band making experimental music, but we experiment every time we go into the studio with the tools that we have and and with the goals we want to achieve and and the and the where just kind of emphasizes it that like we wear this proudly best example would be uh i cannot count on my two hands my fingers how many times we had been advised to edm the shit out of our songs just to make them popular and good so i guess that's the where part of proudness and kind of like we just couldn't do what we're gonna do no matter where the stream is headed we would more more gladly swim maybe against it so are you saying if Axwell and Ingrosso came along and said we want to remix Patience, you would say no? No, well, they, they can, can do, remix, but you they know. can remix. Please do. We like you can find the contacts <laughs> on our webpage. But, but if they would say like we will produce, help you to produce your next album, then I would rather say like uh, but, no thanks. No, but maybe. there would be a difference if 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 they would like feel like okay, we we want to do something together with you guys because we are inspired yeah. by music. But if they're gonna like we should do something EDM because that's just happening right now. Then we would probably say thank you, but no thank you. But if you want to like start from scratch, make something unique, uh, which which just doesn't have to be uh, what's popular at the moment, then we are open for any collab- collaborations with anybody. And yeah. I, I was listening to some EDM recently, well, the other day, and I was thinking, is music in 2016 really any more formulaic than it used to be, or is it just formulaic in a different way? I mean, if you look back at 1997, you had all that Max Martin stuff with, with the jump to the chorus that was in a higher key. Mm. And now you've got EDM where you have to have whoa, whoa in the chorus. I mean, isn't it just a, a formula and every every mainstream group has always followed a formula? Or is it worse than it used to be? I think it's worse than it used to be, but, you know, there there are also those bands that are doing something completely different, you know. Like, the first moment I heard the new song by Biffy Clyro, The Wolves of Winter, that's insane. That's not, that's not a, like, a classical, like, a pop rock song. And, and, and some of their, like, previous albums have been quite, like, popish. So when, when the first moment I, I heard that song, I was just like they're back like it with yeah. their like weird sense of humor you know yeah and yeah. biffy clyro is an example of a band that's been around for well a long long time and yeah. most of the time they've been around they've not been but selling records in big numbers so yeah. m- maybe the fact that they've got that experience do you think means that they can they can be strange and they can be more creative I, I truly hope so. Like I, that that's one of my dreams. <laughs> that 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 the weirdness, that they maybe are giving like the ex- example that uh, that um, big bands can be weird, and then maybe like the uh, the listeners will think like, oh, yeah. if they are weird, then maybe some other weird music is also like. That's not called weird. Let's call it, call it good. Mm. <laughs> no, but. I just wanted to make a point. Yeah, like, but with, um, with formula, like you listen to Sam Smith's uh, "I'm Not the Only One," hmm. that's a very classical pop song, but it's amazing. It, it could have been written in the fifties. It could have been written in the sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, beginning of two thousands. It's written in the two thousand and tens, and it's still relevant. It still sounds good, and it would work like six decades ago as well. So it's a formula. Yes, is it great? Absolutely. So I think if you have a great tune if you have a great chorus or, or a great track it doesn't have to be weird per se it just has to touch people in some way do, do you think the radiohead are still innovating or uh, do you um, do you expect something else from the new album i mean um do, do you feel that they that they really have stopped innovating i will um i'm a big radio fan i have been i have actually been um uh, which was the last one before uh, now the with lotus, lo- lo- lotus flower that's one album I haven't gotten really into. I don't know why; it just doesn't speak to me. Before that, I have I like have all the I have the records, I have CDs, I have the singles. Uh, so I have been I have been really into them. Um, and remember when In Rainbows came out? That was the like the fear I had. Like, okay, maybe it's gonna go downhill from here. And I was so surprised. I was so wrong. I love that record. I absolutely love it. So 
based on just Burn the Witch. I don't know. I like just I like the tune. Um, so it's kind of. I don't think they have stopped. And I think like well, Tom York's Eraser is one of my all time favorite records. Uh, I remember like okay, uh, like Tom York said like he listened to uh, Dub for like six or eight months in his house and his wife almost threw him out <laughs> or something but that was the inspiration for it and I think it's an amazing album which is I still listen to it as I only now recently had a CD player so before I had to listen to it on YouTube because it's not available on Spotify or, or anywhere else so mm. I mean uh, I don't think they have stopped I think they are I don't think they're getting started I think they're just very good at it they yeah. have become very good at it yeah. and, and uh, you just cannot argue with that and they just seem to have so much character that I, I never believe they're gonna like uh, choose, choose the easy road. Choose the easy road, yeah. yeah.